Is there going to be progress? So are we moving forward or backward? And as I think that you're aware, there's a highly polarized outlook. In general, and in the very simplest of terms, you could describe it as the techies versus the greenies. And the techies uh, seldom mention the problems that concern uh, climate specialists and environmentalists, and those who want a sustainable society. And conversely, uh, those who are concerned with uh, the green issues are very seldom mentioned the many new technologies that are appearing and on the horizon. In the popular culture, you must be well aware of various apocalyptic cults, that the Mayan end of the world will be on December uh, 21st of this year, and a number of people are interested in that, and there's a, you know, PBS <coughs> discussion on that. Uh, Hollywood always has some disaster movie. The one at the moment is Seeking a Friend for the End of the World with Stephen Carell, although that isn't about a man-made disaster, but about, a, but about an asteroid that's about to strike the Earth. And uh, one of my favorite uh, apocalyptic movies is Wall-E. On the other hand, we have uh, a lot of uh, techno enthusiasts around who are assuming that there's going to be uh, 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 eventual progress and that we're just in a rough patch. Uh, we in the panel are supposing a more sophisticated view of four scenarios on a single axis of pessimism to optimism. Outright disaster on a global basis, you can also apply this on a societal basis, and you pretty much know it if it happens. We're muddling down, which uh, in the short version is going uh, two steps forward and three steps back, or maybe four or five steps back. Muddling up, which is just the reverse, where you go three steps forward and two steps back, or one step back. And then finally, uh, rapid progress, or as Bill likes, uh, <clears throat> a, rise to, a rise to maturity. A little bit of background on, on this, that uh, uh, this whole thing was precipitated inadvertently by Linda Groff, who, uh, is Linda here? Okay, well anyway, she, uh, she wanted to put together an issue of the World uh, Feature Review on uh, systems and future thinking, so I contributed an article, it was rather gloomy, this is at the end of the Bush administration, saying that we were in an era of uh, maladoption, uh, non-adaption and semi-adaption of uh, social systems, and uh, the only response I get was my good and long-time friend Bill Lau, who said, what about technology? So this led to a very long and deep exchange of emails, and uh, we both agreed that, hey, this is pretty interesting stuff, you know, why don't we go public with this? So we published the World Future Review, and then Bill was always pushing the frontier, so uh, he says, well, let's get more people involved, and let's have a questionnaire. Uh, so we developed a uh, brief questionnaire that was posted on Bill's uh, uh, website. <clears throat> and this led to an article in the Futures and a special issue of the uh, Journal of Future Studies and so forth. Uh, so in sum, I, I really uh, like the four scenarios that we have because I think that it's uh, very, very simple. It's a way to organize a lot of information, both positive and negative. And uh, I think the two middle scenarios are more likely, uh, thus it encourages more a complex uh, worldview. And uh, I think it's uh, in many ways, uh, yes? We can't really hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, good, good. I should have, I should have uh, done this sooner. Okay. And finally, a single axis with uh, the four scenarios is much easier to grasp than the standard uh, two by two axis that the Global Business Network and others like to have, where they have uh, 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 rather cute titles for the scenarios, but you aren't sure what it means until you have to read the scenarios. But I hope that our scenarios are clear. Anyway, we. Uh, Today, I have a representative for uh, at least three of the uh, scenarios. And, uh, Rick Slaughter is going to take the gloomy case for disaster uh, in terms of overshooting collapse. And then I'm going to follow with uh, the case for muddling down. And uh, Bill's going to have the case for muddling up. And Tad Homer Dixon is going to comment on, uh, on all of us. 
There's actually a fourth uh, position that we could have had, Ronald Havelock, who's the uh, author of Acceleration. Uh, I got involved with a very long email exchange with him, and it's still going on. And he's a, a climate change den denier, but he's also a Democrat, <laughs> which is a very interesting position, sophisticated uh, position. In, the, uh, in April, he had a 21-page, single-page uh, response that uh, was provoked by some earlier email, and I responded briefly with a five-page single space, and now he has another 10-pager, and we talked about his coming uh, here or not, and, uh, you know, I said, gee, gee, you know, I want to avoid any embarrassment, and, you know, somebody who denies climate change, or, uh, no, he casts that aside, he's just afraid that the audience would might boo him because he's such an outlier, and I assured him, oh, no, World Future Society audiences are very open to alternative views. But uh, just for the heck of it, I want to pass this along to him. Uh, uh, how many people here believe that climate change is underway? Okay, virtually all. I'm not, I'm not asking the deniers. Are there any deniers? One, two. Okay, and then... That's the easier question. Then among that, uh, the second the follow-up question is, do you believe that this climate change is anthropogenic? That is, that it's largely caused by human beings. Again, uh, not quite as many hands. Okay, uh, uh, how many who don't believe it's anthropogenic? Okay, now, well, okay, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, have, like, might, might have some, some uh, sympathy here. Uh, and now you've got this leads, uh, I want to have some baseline understanding of where we're headed. That all things considered, given what you know, uh, we have four scenarios, and I just want to ask which, if you see one is more probable than the others, just to see where we're starting from, and then at the end of our session, I'll ask again whether you've become more pessimistic or more optimistic as a result of our efforts to convince you <laughs> Uh, of our perspectives. Now, how many think, people think that of the four scenarios, the most probable one uh, is that we're headed towards disaster? Remind us of the time frame? Yeah, what's the time frame? Oh, the, the next decade or so. The next 20 years. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, Bill and I are always disagreeing. Okay, 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 10 to 20 years. Okay, 10 to 20 years. Okay, we're headed towards disaster. But this was in your in your publications. This wasn't modest disaster. This was all out disaster. all out disaster, where everybody will understand it. Will understand and say, you know, it's a, we really screwed things up. Loss of civilization yeah. in major parts of the world. That's 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 his, his, his definition, right? Uh, okay, we have uh, what about four or five? Uh, okay, uh, for muddling down. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, is uh, roughly about a third muddling up. Okay, aha, uh -huh. Bill's people, okay, it's a, a little bit more than a third, and how many people think that uh, uh, we're really going to have rapid progress in the near future? Get through it, us. Okay, these are all people, so members of Singularity University, no doubt. <laughs> okay, well, the format, each of us is going to take about uh, 10 minutes until the others uh, shut them up, and then uh, there'll be a five-minute follow-up. And then uh, Ted will have, have his say. Then I hope to have about an hour of um, questions and answers to see if we can get some really good uh, questions to stump us up here. Just, just yeah. before you get started, is there any possibility that your panel as a whole could summarize what the fourth scenario would be? Uh, it's uh, give us a ideal, ideal yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, two, there's two. There's two. Yeah, but technologically. Yeah, well, there's uh, the Singularity University is, uh, is very is, is essentially that's the scenario. There's a new book out by the head of Singularity, uh, Peter Diamandis, called uh, Abundance, and they had a spin-off article on the Futurist in the last issue of, of the Futurist. It's what I call the techno ecstatic position, <laughs> and it's it's a companion to this book by Ronald Havelock. Havelock. Uh, his book is called Acceleration. That he isn't quite as, te as tech oriented, but he, he's a devotee of uh, Julian Simon and uh, Jean Lombard, who has an article in the uh, current issue of Foreign Affairs. So, this, 
this debate has been going on in various ways for 40 years. It's not going to be resolved today. We hope to clarify it, maybe put it in a more sophisticated frame and to carry it forward. It just occurred to me that if you're going to do a before and after, it would give us context if we could uh, appreciate the difference between muddling up and... Uh, well, I hope this will become, become clear from our, from, from our comments. Yeah. Okay, now Bill's going to have a uh, brief introduction and then we will be underway. Thank you. Well, it's uh, wonderful to see this good turnout. Um, I want to take just a couple of minutes and provide my view of what we've been doing here. Uh, Mike and I have been working together, and this is not easy. Mike and I are both, we both come from Berkeley. We understand we're both maniacs. But yet, in spite of that, we have worked together. And in fact, we illustrate what I think it's going to take to get us out of this collaboration. Mike and I have put aside, well, we haven't put differences aside. We've worked through them and we produce something that is better precisely because we have strong differences. Here's what we've done. We tried to bring a scholarly perspective to this. You hear a lot about this, uh, this horror, these horrible threats, but it's all anecdotal and it's all opinionated. We tried to put it in a rigorous, uh, futuristic perspective with a trend analysis. I want to ask Wona to send this around. This is, I think, well done. I think you'll like it. You can't study it now, but just glance at it to get a sense of what we've done. We've organized it into uh, the trends that are driving the mega crisis, and we find about 18 of those. It's, and it, we define this broadly as all of the, the threats that, that threaten really the global order. The existing global order is threatened by all of these things, including financial instability and that kind of stuff. And then if we keep this intellectually honest, we also identify the trends resolving the medical crisis. But we only come up with about, I think it's eight or nine trends. We're not trying to slant this, it's just it's hard to find good positive developments that seem to be resolving.